it comes down to with these next two guys is are you taking the safety, which I think I think Royce is pretty safe. Like he's he's got career stats to back everything up. He's a, he's a pretty solid rusher. Um, he's got a big frame. He's got a decent amount of career catches and looks decent catching 79, the ball. Seventy nine, baby. That's a lot of catches. Um, and 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 can do a little do a little bit of everything for your team. There's no crazy long speed or like crazy elite burst or anything. But he runs out. Lines. He outruns some dudes sometimes. He, he certainly does. He's I underrated think. with his speed. Yeah, but at the, at the NFL level, it'll be apparent that he's not as fast as a lot of these other guys. Fair. Um, <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> and I, I think he still can do work in, in a 20, 30 yard range in, in the NFL. And I, I think he is pretty a pretty safe player. I think he can go right in somewhere and, and be pretty efficient with what's going on. And then Balage is to me is like just a ginormous ceiling home run cut. So kind of whichever way you're feeling right there at that point in the draft. Obviously, again, before we're talking about the real NFL draft and we see how that unfolds, if we're talking right now, like the the ceiling and the upside for Balage and the home run cut ability might make me lean a little bit towards Balage at the current second just because for sure obviously you can see the receiving game which everyone's drooling over and that he's a physical <sighs> specimen and oh, that yeah. he's real fast and all this other stuff well he's born with night matchup nightmare ability yeah i think i said that I last time we that. Talked I like, about that's him. a good line what like we do I, we say don't mess it up often but if we're at rb10 here this is where you swing for the fences like Royce's career catches and all that good stuff. And, you you know, like you said, if he works in a 20 or 30 yard box in the NFL, Matt Forte made a living doing that. And I could live with that. That's no problem. But with everything, even coming out of the senior bowl, Kalen Balage, even, you know, the wide receiver chops, nobody could even. There, it was a matchup nightmare, yada, yada, yada. This is where you swip, switch it and go from safety to home run cut. For sure. me. I mean, I, that's my personality. At the top, I'll go with, the, you know, the, the chalk is the safer, but. Down here at RB ten, I I would I would go with Kalen and just hope that I hit a home run. Yeah, I mean, it just we we, took, we broke down Kalen Balage and we just we my big takeaway from it is that at Arizona State there was a thunder and a lightning, and he shouldn't have been the thunder, and he shouldn't have been the lightning. Yeah. No, yeah, you're like in what world is he the lightning? Right. And what, you bug me out with that. He's one. he's the you know Richards was in what the world thunder. is he not the thunder? He should be the thunder. He should be the thunder and the lightning. He should <laughs> right. be the the whole package. Yeah, right. But he was the lightning in this. Yeah, in this I think you were like in what world? Bizarro the- world that Arizona State lives in. Apparently, <laughs> yeah, what world is the two hundred thirty pound man the lightning? Right. And you just wish that there was a little bit more uh, testicular fortitude behind his <laughs> running style. <laughs> testicular fortitude. Oh, that's a new one. That was a mankind favorite back in the day in wrestling. <laughs> I thought it was mankind. <laughs> mankind. Oh, my bad. Yeah. Um, or, that's a little Cactus Jack. Or maybe it was Cactus Jack. One of those Cactus two. Jack, little testicular fortitude. That sacco came out. That was it. He'd he jump was, off three uh, three levels. Not a big deal. Oh, he was, Mick Foley was a wild dude. <laughs> he was so wild. Well. <laughs> <laughs> He's joking around. <laughs> Feels so good when he jokes. Anything to get you guys to stop talking about wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Just throw a sound clip in there. Go, Way Jay, go Wade. Jay Wayne. That's fair enough. Um, no, I'm on. I'm on board. Sonko. I think. <laughs> I think I'll take Kalen Balaj at ten. I think you gotta. I think you gotta take this home run cut. Dude started off his career as an edge rusher, which I think is kind of intriguing. Um, he spent his sophomore season season playing on both sides of the ball. Really like that from a from a, I know how to play football kind of standpoint. Um, I think his best attribute is his athletic size and speed. I think he's got pretty long speed, pretty decent long speed. It's about as good as Penny's, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think he's supposed to be faster than Penny. He is um, faster than Penny. But I definitely like his receiving ability more than Penny. Oh, for sure. Um, that, that, and that's what you're shoot, right now. What you're looking at with him is, is the receiving ability absolutely. and what he can do in it with that big frame and his explosiveness and all yep. those things. At one point, Pro Football Focus had him ranked as the number one receiving back out of all the backs. Um, he had eight touchdowns in one game. Yeah, against right? Texas Tech. We already said that. That's yeah. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious. In, in Kalen Balaj, you're looking for. Uh, the second coming of David Johnson, a big dude that can catch. That's the biggest set of shoulder pads on the field. You're just, you're looking for that home run cut right there, just trying to catch lightning in a bottle. For the most part, he's definitely not David Johnson. Oh, I didn't he does say not. He was, but if you he, look back, David Johnson wasn't David Johnson until he was on the Cardinals playing in preseason games, and you're like, oh my god. Well, because David if he Johnson was, he wouldn't runs, have been averaging two point five in the rookie draft. David Johnson 
runs very aggressive and he runs mean and sure. that's pretty evident to see. Well, I'm just saying, but if David Johnson was David Johnson, he sure wouldn't have been going in yeah, 2.5 yeah, yeah. in the rookie draft. My, my point is that most of these games you watch from Balazs, he he doesn't have that aggressive mentality. It's the same kind of knock that I have on Rashad Penny is he won't yeah. he won't go in there with that mentality that I'm going to beat you with He's my shoulder and I'm going to run you over. He's not a killer. He's not a banger. But I will say that UCLA game though, now yeah. I know they're not the best rush D and I and I know that you know you, you we can we can talk about how bad that team was in general, but I don't I don't the the game was in Los Angeles, so I I, I hinted at maybe the the fact that he doesn't kind of bring that aggressive mentality all the time to a game might be based on effort. He's in Los Angeles, he's feeling the vibe. This dude went out there and he you could just tell it was just a different game from him, and it's at least one game that I can point to and be like, well, and he ran somebody over in the Senior Bowl, so. Well, whatever. <laughs> well, maybe he could start channeling that defensive end part of himself. My my point about this this UCLA game was that it, it was it was a whole game where he basically put the whole game on tape where he showed you aggressiveness and, and where where his 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 indecision looked more like patience versus indecision and then he would he would put his shoulder down and he was running dudes over. He was getting extra yards and it wasn't a crazy statistical game. I think it was only 21 carries for like 97 yards and there was no touchdowns. I don't even think there were any catches, but he just showed you like that that potential that you're gambling on here and at least he showed you at least one time where you can point and say, "Look, I saw him be what I think he could be. I definitely saw it right there. I saw that aggressiveness and every Sunday in the NFL is like playing in Los Angeles. So all these games are big. It means a lot. I think I feel like there's more people on a general population standpoint talking to you every day. Just based probably based on fantasy football alone, there's so many people playing that, that 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 I think I think we could maybe get rid of the effort thing here when he moves to the NFL and he has this ability. And then you got the receiving game on fleet. Like I if, think if you if you don't you got to take not, him. If effort's a problem, it doesn't get fixed from going from college to the NFL. I can promise you that. More often than not, I mean, Casey's I don't know. Correct. I mean, maybe if this if this guy wanted to be aggressive and a killer, he'd be aggressive and a killer. I don't think it. The the what you're hoping for is that it will change because if it does change, you get a steal with this guy because yeah. if he was running like a lot of these guys that we said above him, he would be at the top of this list bar none. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so and right now we're talking about this potential upside that could be right. with him rather than him just being a boss. Um, but I, I I don't know. I I think if if efforts an issue, it's not something that usually just gets fixed because now you're getting a paycheck. You know. But I mean, it could be the. You should be playing as hard as you can right now to get the no, biggest get paycheck possible. And normally possible. I'd be all, I'm, I'm pretty much usually taking the safe pick here. And usually I'd be like, let me take Royce Freeman over Balaj because of the safeness yeah. and because I don't have to take a home run cut or let me hit a couple doubles. Well, But like, I've seen him do it and I think he can. I think he just needs to get yeah, that mentality. I, mean, I, think, you, I think you can change. I think you can learn how to... Well, I think become what, a killer, I think maybe. No, saying, if you like at least you know take take Fournette for instance. He did, I'm not gonna say his ankle wasn't hurt, or like even a Jadavion Clowney uh, Gamecock. You put that season together that shows you that shows everybody. You said cock. This guy's better. This right. guy's this guy's on another level. You put that season together, and you're like everybody's talking. You're gonna go in the first round of the draft. Your yeah. top three pick. Your top five pick. Maybe then you might. I'm not saying it's right. Well, not saying it's the right thing to do, but maybe sometimes you could you could logically argue if it's smarter sure. or not and then then you can also say from the other side well maybe now that you pull back a little bit you get hurt because you're not trying as hard you know but the semantics but the thing is it's like all right this guy has not, he hadn't put together eight or 12 games in a row where you're like damn this dude's a first round draft pick no matter what yeah well when we talked about it in the podcast like you were you were there was a ton of hype behind this guy in 16 coming into 17 and you were hoping that he was just about to explode and it never really happened and there maybe it's attributed to a bunch of weird usages of him and and not the best scheme fit for him possibly that's that and, could, and that's all those kind of things and that, that happens yep. i mean that's that's a real thing yep um my i wasn't saying that you can't change and be a banger I, i'm just i'm saying effort is something that isn't normally going to if you're not a high effort guy you're not just going to be like all of a sudden des Bryant isn't about to be the most high effort guy it doesn't mean that once he catches the ball he doesn't run really hard when he has it yeah just there's probably if, if he I don't was think he's quite des Bryant. i, I think no i'm not, not and, saying that he was i was just and i don't think that it's i don't think it's a lack of effort as far as efforts sake goes i think it's where are you focused that effort yeah 
right? And if you're if you're focusing your effort on busting off big plays, then you're not ha- you don't have that short yardage killer mentality, and that's something yeah. I think you can just shift your effort. And when he when he stepped onto the field versus UCLA, they weren't, weren't a good team, and he knew he was the best guy on the field, and he played like it. And then it and then it was evident, and I don't think that it mattered who was in front of him at that point when he decided to put his shoulder down and he runs this 6'2", 222 pound frame into you. There's nothing you can do about it. It doesn't really matter who you are. Yeah. So, I don't know. I I just I think there's some hope. I think he can transition his effort into the right spots. I think he's I think he's a good kid. I think he wants to do the right thing. I think he wants to learn. I think he wants to improve. Yeah, I'm so why, down to take why, this home run cut here. So if he's the home run cut, why is Royce Freeman the safer play? Oh man, I mean he's just he's just everything you want in a back. He's well, like just, a, almost a complete back here. I well, he could be the best back out of all these dudes we're talking about. Sure, but and before we started talking about Balaj, I kind of alluded to it. It's just like there's their safety and those numbers. He's yep. he's you know put together a bunch of good seasons. Um, he's big. He's got solid vision. He uses his blocks well. I think he can create on his own. I think he's pretty decent at making that first guy miss. He, I think he's got deceptive speed. I think he's pretty quick. He went through some injuries, but then in, in 17, towards the end of that season, I think he really showed you some short area quickness that he didn't always see. But I, I think that he's got some deceptiveness there to him, and especially for that being such a big dude. I think he can get skinny. I think he's decisive. He's, he's aimed at getting upfield. And I mean, he's a talented dude. He finished seventh all time in rushing yards with yeah, well, fifty six hundred twenty one. Just want to throw that question out there, see how you're feeling. You can't look like you you can't look at his career numbers and say he's not a good football player. That's no. all. That's all it is to it. Just is dude, the dude? Dude brings his lunch pail to game to the game yeah. every week. Effort's not an issue with him, right? Is and consistency? He's good. Is nine hundred and forty seven carries too much? Is it like people want to knock him based on the tread? No man, that was the way it used to be. You used to, if you were good, you used to carry it two thousand times in college because there was no leaving early. Back in, the, I read that list earlier about the thirty guys over two thousand yards. All of those cats, those guys, those guys that are wearing the gold jackets now, yeah, they mean, carried it. They carried it game after game. Especially after game. a guy who's built like he's built. You know, he's he's a tank. Like yeah, so you need you got a five foot ten, two hundred five foot eleven, two hundred twenty five, two hundred thirty pound tank with. Four years of solid production in and around some injuries, kept playing, and tons of catches. Mm-hmm. And went, went Royce through, Freeman is safe. Went through good and bad teams while he was there at Oregon. Went through know? a whole coaching overhaul. Two, two of them. Well, no, they're, they're changing this year. So done. Yeah, well, I mean, the 2015 numbers were absolutely ridiculous. 1,800-something yards and, you know, 17 touchdowns. And just in 16, he dealt with, with a knee and ankle and sternum injury. And a coach and that team was just really bad. And yeah. that's why he decided he had a down 16, even though, even though the overall numbers aren't that bad. He decided to come back. You put 79 receptions down. I love that. I think I saw him line out wide some, saw him run some more outs. Most of them were pretty much screens around the line of scrimmage, but you see a little bit of versatility being shown yeah. from not just being running out of the backfield. And, and then I've, I've said it before about other guys. It's something I've been trying to take notice of. You know, when you're pass protecting and you don't have anyone pr- to pass protect, do you break off and do you become an outlet? And he does that just like some of these other dudes that, that I've referred to. I he's listed at 234 pounds on NFL.com. He didn't weigh in at the Senior Bowl. I, I think he's probably trying to cut some weight. I think I'm a little bit intrigued by that. I think if he did cut a little bit of weight, it might make him even more yeah. explosive. And maybe he was a little bit lighter at the end of the 17 year, and that's why you saw With him a little more nimbly, bimbly. Be a little bit more nimbly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'd like to see him cut a little bit of weight. I think he's got really good footwork, and I think the vision really stands out at the top of the list for this guy it's it's fantastic uh the, the one the knock again that we had on him just like we did a lot of these bigger backs in this class is yep. that sometimes at the line of scrimmage maybe he relies on patience and getting cute when he should just put that 235 pound frame down right and hammer somebody but once he gets past that first level and is 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 rumbling like there's just body parts flying all over the place because he's hammering dudes in the second level for whatever reason. So that that was kind of my observation when I watched him. Yeah, part of me thinks that sometimes he's he is a little soft at the point of contact. Um, but then the other part of me knows that he had a shoulder injury at one point that he had to deal with. And there are plenty of times where he does have flashes of being a banger and around the goal line. And I, I, like he showed me flashes of being able to get it done, even though it wasn't consistent. And sometimes it wasn't there. But yeah. I mean, I could, 
I could be persuaded to taking Royce over any of these guys, but right now I think I got to leave him at eleven. But I think he's. I think like we started it off with to, to bring a close to it. I think there's a high ceiling and like huge potential for for Balage, and that interests me. Like you said, being a little further down the list here, and probably down further in the second round kind of area in your draft, maybe end a second even. You could possibly be, and and Freeman's Freeman's pretty safe, and I can't be upset if I get a hold of Freeman in in the mid to late second, really, in in my opinion. Oh but, no way, not so. I'm definitely not. I mean, I feel like once the uh, drafts come around, uh, there's if you look at a, an overall rookie ranking list, there's wide receivers mixed in, but after last year's crop of running backs made everybody. Uh, a little bit spoiled i believe late first round early second round people are going right. to be hammering running backs and, and and we're not super far into any sort of wide receiver evaluations but there's definitely not a whole bunch of elite high-end talent that i believe that you should even be obviously we're all about drafting running backs crazy amounts of them in your rookie drafts mm -hmm. but if there is an elite wide receiver i don't have a problem taking him and there may only be you know two or three of those guys that to even consider mixing in with these running backs in my opinion yeah well, you said it well, haven't done a ton of that research. That That's yet to come. But I do feel very good about how much time and effort we put into researching these backs because I think they're going to be heavily factored in throughout your entire rookie draft. You're going to be thinking about, you know, if you're in 2QB league, you're going to be thinking about quarterbacks. There's a couple tight ends. There's some wide receivers. But really, it's like, all right, I need a back. Need Which of backs these backs right am I about to take? With some and it just keeps going. We're at 11 here debating whether he's better than number seven. And, like, yeah. we're deep into 11. There's not the overall crazy elite talent, but there is a ton of depth, and there's a lot of solid swings to take. Absolutely. And pretty excited about this running back class. So we're leave, We're going Balaj at 11, uh, Royce at 12. No, and, Balaj uh, at 10. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, Balaj at 10, Royce at 11. And we'll come back after the break with the last three guys, and we'll, we'll kind of put those guys in an order and, and discuss. For your pleasure.